Hello, hello, hello. My name is Reverend Brian Richards and we're just going to sing a song to start off with and then we're going to continue our teaching uh, with the book of James. We realized that um, we last Christmas Day we started a new message and we left uh, something undone. So we're going to complete the book of James and then on the Sunday, uh, which will be, I think, New Year's Day. Uh, we have Christmas Day on a Sunday, I, I think, if memory serves me right, New Year's Day is on the, the next Sunday. So, next Sunday we'll be making a, a new New Year's message and uh, continue to continue the message from uh, the 25th of December, which was Christmas Day. We started on Ebenezer, the message there, and talking about the rock of salvation, which was Jesus. And we, we thought it was a good message to continue because we have more revelation to give. And so that's what we'll be doing next Sunday. However, right now, we need to finish what we started with the book of James. And so we'll be reading that today and, and uh, giving out... The, uh, the revelations that we have through the book of James, chapter 4, is it? The 4 and 5 we're going to read today. Before we do that, we're going to sing uh, a couple of songs and bring the anointing of God, the tangible presence of God, into our service today. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to step aside and you'll see the words go up on the screen. We're trying something new. So we want you to sing along with us. And uh, so we do. I'll step aside so the words can go up on the screen. God bless you. I'll come back in a few minutes. Let's go. I go to the rock of my salvation. Go to the stone that the builders reject. Go to the mountain, the mountain stands by me, stands by me. When all around me sinking sand, across the solid rock I stand. When I need a shelter, when I need a friend, I go to the rock. time. I go to the rock of my salvation. Go to the stone that the builders reject me. Go to the mountain. The mountain stands by me. Stand by me. When all around is sinking sand. Christ the solid rock I stand. When I need a shelter. When I need a friend. I Straight into our teaching now. 
that we've been uh, sharing the last uh, last week or so. We've been going through the book of James. So we, today we're going to complete that. So on Sunday we can follow our our uh, teaching that we started, which is Ebenezer. So I'm going to I'm going to promote that today. Uh, Ebenezer is a wonderful message that we stumbled upon and that God really brought a, an anointing in my uh, in, in my uh, meditation. Uh, it says meditate on the Lord and so I did, you know, and I, I had this uh, just one word Ebenezer and I looked it up and I found that it was in the in the book of Samuel, and it brought a whole new understanding. Um, and we're going to relate that into modern times, from Old Testament into modern times, uh, because there is a pattern. And God is, you know, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And what is already uh, happened in history history repeats itself all the time and so we have patterns and principles in which we follow and if we recognize that we can predict the future yes maybe uh, sometimes we can predict the future just by reading the word of God and say yes this has happened before maybe it'll happen the same way again sometimes it does sometimes there are adjustments because of modern times but in John 16 and verse 13, it actually says that the Holy Spirit will show us things to come. How does he do that? By us meditating in the Word of God and relating it to today. Isn't that wonderful? It sounds easy, I know. But, you know, this is how people prophesy things into being uh, because they take the the essence of what they've learned, the anointing of what they learned, and they channel that anointing into futuristic events. And so, praise God, we're going to do that, and that's uh, next Sunday, that's going to be New Year's Day, and we're going to have a brand new message. Isn't that a wonderful thing? So, right now, we're going to uh, finish what we've started with the book of James, and of course, James, uh, whether you know it or not, James is, uh, some people say, oh, it's a heavy word. But it's only heavy for those people that need to change their lifestyle and get their life right with Jesus. It can be heavy. But if you're already there and you're a student of the Word of God, like in Timothy, uh, 2 Timothy, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 15 says, Study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed. So if you're already a student of the Word of God, you know what I'm talking about when you say it is easy to be obedient rather than disobedient. So we're going to go through James and bring allow this word to bring correction to your life and be blessed. I'm going to let Joshua speak first and then I'm going to speak after we put this little uh, little platform here for Joshua because he's uh, even though he's uh, getting a big boy now, we've got our camera set high so anybody can uh, can fit in the camera. Okay, bless you. Just got to get rid of this. Something pops up. Yeah. And probably because it's online, I'll get rid of it too. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> Hello, my name is Joshua Brian Richards. Um, I'm the son of Reverend Brian Richards, as you should already know. Um, today I'm going to be reading James chapter 4, uh, James chapter 4 and 5, the whole thing. Um, okay. What is causing the arguments and fights among you? Isn't it because there is a whole army of evil desires within you? You want what you don't have, so you kill to get it. You long for what others have and can't afford it, so you start a fight to 
fight to take away them from them. And yet the reason you don't have any don't have what you want is that you don't ask God for it. And even when you do ask, you don't get it because your whole aim is wrong. You only what will you only want what will give you pleasure. And before I go on, I'm reading this in the Living Bible. <clears throat> you are like an unfaithful wife who loves her husband's enemies. Don't you realize that making friends with God's enemies, the, the evil pleasures of this world, makes you an enemy of God? I say it again, that if your aim is to enjoy the evil pleasure of the godless world, you cannot also be a friend of God. Or what do you think the scripture means when it says that the Holy Spirit, whom God has placed within us, watches over us with tender jealousy? But we, he gives us more and more strength to stand against all such evil longings. As the scripture says, God gives strength to the humble, and but sets himself against the proud and haughty. So give yourself humbly to God, resist the devil and he will flee from you. And when you draw close to God, God will draw close to you. Wash your hands, you, you sinners, and let your hearts be filled with God alone to make them pure and true to him. Let there be tears for the wrong things you have done. Let there be sorrow and sincere grief. Let there be sadness instead of laughter, and gloom instead of joy. Then when you feel your worthlessness before the Lord, He will lift you up in courage and help you. Don't criticize and speak evil about each other. Dear brothers, if you do, you will be fighting against God's law of loving one another, declaring it is wrong. But your job is not to decide whether this law is right or wrong, but to obey it. Only he, he who made the law can rightly judge among us. He alone decides us, decides to save us or destroy. So what right do you have to judge or criticize others? Look here, you people who say, today or tomorrow who we, we are going to such and such a town. Stay there a year and open up a profitable business. How do you know what is going to happen tomorrow? For the length of our lives is uncertain as the morning mist. Now you see it. Soon it is gone. What you want to say is, if the Lord wants us to, we shall live and do this or that. Otherwise, you will be bragging about your own plans, and such self-confidence never pleases God. Remember, too, that knowing what is right to do, then and then at not doing it is sin. Look here, you rich men. Now is the time to cry and groan with anguished grief because of all the terrible troubles ahead of you. Your wealth is even now rotting away, and your fine clothes are becoming mere moth-eaten rags. The value of your gold and silver is dropping fast, yet it will stand as evidence against you and eat your flesh like fire. That is what you have stored up for yourself to receive on that coming day of judgment. For listen, hear the cries of the workers whom you have cheated of their pay. Their cries have reached the ears of the Lord of hosts. You have spent your years of, on earth having fun, satisfying every whim, and now your fat hearts are ready for slaughter. You have condemned and killed good men who had no power to defend themselves. Now as for you, dear brothers who are waiting for the Lord's return, be patient like a farmer who waits until the autumn for his precious harvest to ripen. Yes, be patient and take courage, for the coming of the Lord is near. Don't grumble about each other, brothers. Are, are you yourselves above criticism? For see, the great judge is coming, he is almost here. Let him do whatever criticizing must be done.
Following examples of patience in suffering, look at Lord's prophets. We know, we know how happy they are now they stay true to him. To him, Then, even though suffered greatly for it, Job is an example of men who continue to trust the Lord in sorrow. From his experiences, we can see how the Lord's plan finally ended in good, for he is full of tenderness and mercy. But most of all, dear brothers, do not swear either by heaven or earth or nothing else, anything else. Just say a simple yes or no so that you will not sin and receive God's curse. Amen. Is anyone among you suffering? And he, he should keep on praying about it. And those who have re reason to be thankful should continually be singing praises to the Lord. Is anyone sick? He should call for the elders of the church and they should pray over him and pour a little oil over him, calling on the Lord to heal him. And their prayer is offered in faith, will heal him, for the Lord will make him well. And if his sickness was caused by sin, some sin, the Lord will forgive him. Admit your faults to one another and pray for each other so that they may be healed. The earnest prayer of a righteous man has great power and wonderful results. Elijah was com as a completely human as we are, and yet when he prayed earnestly that no rain would fall, none fell for the next three and a half years. Then he would, then he prayed again. This time that it would rain, and down it poured the. Gr down it poured and the grass turned green and the gardens began to grow again. Dear brothers, if anyone has slipped away from God and no longer trusts the Lord and someone helps him understand the truth again, the, that person who brings him back to God will have saved a wandering soul from death, bringing about the forgiveness of his many sins. Sincerely, James. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I think you've done a wonderful, wonderful job there. I can hear the praise of other people. I can hear that in the spirit. Hallelujah. We're only here amongst ourselves with about two or three of us here. When two or three gather in the name of the Lord Jesus, then he's here by his spirit. But I tell you what, that was written uh, and uh, 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 and spoken uh, out of our mouth uh, by James writing to the 12 tribes of Israel and uh, also the the Jewish Christians um, we, we, we had uh, through the book of James uh, talks about the impartiality and towards others and the sins of the tongue and this is the continuation of that in James chapter 4 and 5. You notice he's actually talking about the Christian conduct that we should be. And uh, we're not giving that word in direction and correction as a prophet should. We're giving that word as a reminder of our conduct. Each and every one of us uh, need to have a checkup from the neck up as soon as we wake up in the mornings. Eh? Have a check up from the neck up as soon as we get up. Amen. And uh, so we read this word because some people would find it hard to receive. Um, definitely non-Christians would find it hard to receive. But as Christians now, we should check our conduct check our, of how we are living our life before God. And so James is a, a very disciplined word and we gave that word today out of the living Bible so we understand more understanding comes. If you're a King James version like myself and like um, uh, Joshua would prefer to read out of the King James because it's quicker and easier to remember. But the Living Bible actually spells it out so we are not without excuse. Okay? That's why we've got 
uh, Joshua to read it out because we are not without excuse and if a child can lead us it says in Isaiah there that uh, in the days to come in the towards the end days that a child shall lead us and the lion shall sit with the lamb and God will cause everything wild to come tame uh, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord so the sins of the tongue and the sins of the flesh go together it starts by the tongue and then it manifests through the lust of the flesh and that is taught about James chapter 4 that uh, you lust and you have not and you kill and desire to have you know when we when we have wars and rumors of wars it all starts from the sins of the tongue first and so if we can control our tongue we will not get into fussing and fighting and wars and rumors of wars and adulterers and warmongers among us will repent before we get to that stage but there are we're talking to Christians here we are adulterers and adulteresses know you not that the friendship of the world is empty against God so the worldly ways comes into the church we should resist that push it out the worldly ideas of how to live the standard of living from the world should not dictate to the Christian that is in the church today what we should be doing is have influence on the world don't allow the world to have influence on us and when it does happen we know it, it happens to each and every one of us because we are in this world we have to live amongst the other people that are non-christian so we live in this world but we are not of it amen we are citizens from heaven we have dual citizenship we are citizens of the country that we live in but we really are citizens of heaven if you are born again today if you have Jesus living on the inside of you then, then we are told to live after the Spirit in Romans 8 14 those that are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God but if you allow the world to dictate to you dictate to the, your flesh of how you should live then you know not really living the Christian life your spirit should have ascendancy over your five physical senses and your fleshly desires should come into control of the spirit and if God tells you that it's not good for you to have this you just listen just cast it off and resist the temptations of the world and you are by doing that you are resisting the devil himself because the ways the wisdom of the world is devilish it is soulish and it is devilish and it tells us that in James chapter 3 it tells us that this wisdom that descends from above is the wisdom that we need but the earthly sensual and devilish wisdom is from the world okay it says in James chapter 14 3 James chapter 3 and verse 14 it says but if we have bitterness envy and strife in our heart we glory not and lie not against the truth that's what we we have if we have envy and bitterness and strife in our heart we, sh we glory not and we lie uh, with it, the Lord is telling us lie not against the truth for the wisdom that descendeth not from above 
the wisdom that descendeth not from above, in other words, the wisdom that is in the world, is earthly and it's sensual and devilish. And that word sensual means soulish. Aren't we supposed to live out of our soul then? No, because to be soulish is to be sensual ways of the world. And our soul needs to be saved from our spirit. You receive in the spirit and the spirit will save the soul. For where there's envy and strife and confusion, there is every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure and then peaceable, gentle and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits and without partiality and without hypocrisy. The fruits of righteousness is sown in peace to them that make him, that make him what? To make him Jesus, Lord of your life. Jesus is the Prince of Peace and you shall have peace in this world, even though there's all kinds of evil around us, you shall be in peace because you are in the Spirit. Huh? Those that are led of the Spirit of God are the sons of God and you allow the Prince of Peace to be in you and upon you. Amen. It goes through the James and it says in James chapter 4, 7, resist the devil and he will flee from you. That word flee is a very interesting word. It means flee at the speed of light. 186, the speed of light, 186 miles per second. As you resist the devil and you say, no, I can't have the world's wisdom on the world's ways living within me. As you resist the devil, he will flee from you at the speed of light, which is 186 miles per second. That's how strong and powerful the Word of God is. When you use that word and like a turgid sword and you speak it out of your mouth, it will become creative power that will work for you. Let me say that again. The Word of God conceived in your human spirit and spoken out of the mouth will become creative power that will work for you. Amen. Amen. So we draw near to God and we cleanse our heart and we cleanse our hands from all sin as we draw near to God. We humble ourselves in the sight of God by being obedient. And he says, humble yourself in the sight of God and he will lift you up. See, you don't have to um, struggle and strive to do this work, to do this conduct of living, conduct of Christian living. All you got to do is resist the devil and submit yourselves to God and he will lift you up. He will make you a better person. He will um, make you the, the Christian that we're supposed to be. Don't judge one another. Don't get into fussing and fighting and judging one another. Uh, and it actually says, therefore for him, in, in verse 17, therefore in him that does good, who, therefore him who knows to do good and does not, for him it's sin. That's the sin that God hates. When he knows that you know better, and you don't do it. Yeah? That's the sin that will lead us away from God. Therefore, to him who knows to do good, in James chapter 4, verse 17, he says, Therefore, him who knows to do good and does not, for him it is sin. And so, we cannot commit sin accidentally. You know, if you 
find yourself doing something that you think, oh, maybe I shouldn't be doing this because the Bible says I shouldn't be doing it. You catch yourself there. Well, that's the Holy Spirit of God reminding you that this thing has been sinful in the past, but now that you know better, it's up to you now to be obedient to that. Okay? And that's why it says, for him who knows to do good and does not, for him it's sin. It wasn't sin before because he didn't know. But now that you know, then for you, you if you don't be obedient to what God is showing you, then for you it is sin. It goes into chapter 5 and there's a lot of good things there. And remember this, this is the Christian conduct and prayerfully we will be better people when we have prayer and the word together. Okay, You mingle the prayer with your mingle the word of God with your prayer and you take your request to the word you find the answer and you pray that answer it will happen I promise you this is the way the word of God works this is the way God works and that you find the answer first and you pray that answer and God will just say yes the anointing is there and it'll just work the anointing God has not left this world defenseless he's not left you he'll never leave you nor forsake you if you have Jesus in your heart Jesus promised to you today is that I will never leave you or forsake you he's given you his word and if you speak his word like a two-edged sword it will work for you hallelujah what do you want this new year you want it better than the old one? New Year is coming and there's still the promise is the same. That Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forever. Let's do a better job this year than what we did last year. Let's get our better victories, greater victories, greater. The abundance of all things. Jesus come to give us life and give it more abundantly. Hallelujah. I've experienced a lot of good blessings in my life, but the abundance is still of yet to arrive at that. But I'll be pressing in next year. I'll be pressing in, and 2017 is going to be the greatest year of my life. Will you join us? Be on our mailing list, and you will see great things happen in your life, because I'll be praying for you. I'll be sending you special messages that's going to change your life forever. Amen. It'll change your life forever. And so, it says in my Bible here, grudge not one against the other. Don't have judgment for one another. Don't have a grudge. You know? You resist the devil, he'll flee from you. Don't have a grudge of some man, some woman doing better than you. And uh, this a condemnation will come upon you if you do that. You know, if you compare yourself with another person and you and you grudge, you know, you have a grudge against them maybe they've done something wrong to you or maybe they've done something better they are doing re receiving things better than what you are don't have grudge towards them because the judge standeth at the door what door the door to your heart the access to your heart god is standing at the door And take, my brethren, the prophets who have spoken in the name of the Lord for an example of the suffering of affliction and of patience. Remember those that have gone before us, the prophets of old. Remember one in particular, and that is Job. The patience of Job. Okay? 
As you read through Job, oh, you'll see so much that he lost. As you read further, you'll see so much patience that he had. And even the wife he had says, just give this thing away, it's not working for you. And some people will say that to you. you where is your Christianity now? Why isn't it working for you? He worketh by patience. It starts off in the book of James. Can it all joy? Can it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that it's your trying of your faith that worketh patience. That word worketh means activate patience. Amen. And I'm preaching to myself today. That word worketh means activate patience. You activate the patience that you have by working it, working it, working it. And that's what Job did. And what happened at the end of the book? God gave him twice as much as he had before. Everything he lost was restored double. Praise God. So, behold, we count them happy which endure. Like Job. He was happy. He got twice as much as he ever lost. And through this conduct, if you are living the life that you're supposed to live, then if there's still any afflicted among you, in James chapter 5 and verse 13, if there's any afflicted, any among you afflicted, let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. Praise God. Is any sick among you? Let him call upon the elders of the church and let him pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of Jesus. And the prayer of faith shall raise him up and the Lord shall raise him up and he that hath committed sins shall be forgiven of him. How about that? Sickness and sin go hand in hand. You know? Every time I have a few sicknesses, so I've had a few in my life and I'm still fighting the sicknesses that try to come back. And the sicknesses are related to sin. If you do not resist the devil, if you do not resist the sin, Sin and sickness are the two destructive twins that go hand in hand together. If you have a sickness, find the sin and ask to say, Lord, forgive me of all sin. I am seeking healing now. I believe Jesus is Lord of my life and I receive healing and deliverance right now. It says in verse 16, confess your faults one to another and for the pray for one another that you may be healed and the fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much is that you today is that you today can i pray with you can you trust me to pray with you and i will pray that the prayers of a righteous man availeth much are you righteous do you not know whether you're righteous or not can you make sure right now can you reach out to me right now and say, I want Jesus? If you are reaching out right now and you're saying, I want Jesus in my life, then I'm going to pray for you. And I want you to pray these words after me. Say, Dear Lord God, I believe in Jesus. I believe Jesus died for me. And he rose again from the dead. I ask Jesus to come into my heart and to take away all sin and to take away all sickness. I believe that Jesus rose again from the dead and he gives me the victory today. I believe I receive forgiveness of sins and deliverance from my sickness. Jesus name. Amen. I'm praying for you today. If you put your name on my mailing list so I know who I'm praying for. You will hear from us and I will
give you uh, one of my books that will help you with your Christian walk. Goes on to say, the fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Amen. We'll finish right there. And finishes off in verse 20, it says, Let him know that he which covers the sinner from an from the error of his ways shall save a soul from death and hide a multitude of sins. Isn't that what we should be doing? As I see on the YouTube, many exposing other people's sins, but they're not in love. If they're in love, then love covers a multitude of sins. We know there's people not perfect yet, that are trying to be perfect in their own strength. If they do that, they will fall into the hands of the devil. We should be in unity, not disunity. God blesses unity. Hallelujah. And so, let him which covers the sinner from his ways, he converts the sinner into a saint. Hallelujah. So cover the sin with the blood of Jesus. Cover it with your love. And you'll convert the sinner to a saint. Hallelujah. And, uh, and you cover it and you convert him from the error of his ways. You shall save that soul from death. Hallelujah. And hide a multitude of sins. Love covers and hides a multitude of sins. Heavenly Father, I pray that we can walk in love today, that we can walk in unity, and let nothing hinder our fellowship with you or any member of the body of Christ. I pray in Jesus' name. Please be on my mailing list today. Jesus wants you. Wants you made whole. In Jesus' name. Oh,